Thank you for joining us for our last evening of our series, Home Alone, Lessons Learned in Isolation. So thankful that you've been joining us the last couple of weeks. And if you're new for the first time this week, we hope that you'll go back and check out our YouTube or check out our Facebook page to find previous videos from this lesson, from this series. It's been a fantastic series so far. Um, and next week, we'll be starting a new series entitled Feed Me. Um, this series uh, will go for five weeks, and it will focus on different spiritual disciplines. Um, as we, as Christians, are in our walk with God, there's a lot of different ways for us to both connect to Him and show our devotion to Him as we grow closer to Him and um, become followers of Him. We hope that you'll join us in this study um, that will not only bless us during our time as we meet on Wednesday evenings at 7, but also will encourage you for further spiritual growth outside of this period of time. Again, we hope that you'll join us for the next five weeks in this new series. Tonight, we will have our final lesson in Home Alone. We have heard from some excellent speakers so far with um, David Shannon and TJ Kirk, and tonight we'll be hearing um, from someone who I love to listen to and learn from, who's been a great mentor to me and who also loves the Word of God, and he's passionate about it. Um, tonight, we're going to get to hear from Matt Cook, who's a professor at Fried Hardeman University. Um, Matt is a professor of Bible and missions, and he's an all-around awesome um, teacher, and you will see that tonight as he looks at Jesus in the wilderness. Uh, please open your Bibles as we continue to study together. So about the time I learned that we were gonna be home for a while, I made a list of things to get done. I have a white fence that gets filthy. I thought, I'll clean that thing off. Um, I thought, I'm gonna clean out my off closet, power wash the house, clean out the gutters, plant some shrubs, take a video course on camper maintenance, had all these big plans. And I've accomplished a couple of those things. You ought to see my fence, it looks awesome. My closet, so much better. I'm guessing you've done something like that or your parents made a list and they've made you help them do something like that. I made my nine and seven year old kids help me clean the fence. It's amazing what you can get little kids to do, especially a seven year old little boy when you give them a power washer and it just feels like this big powerful gun. They think it's the coolest thing ever. While we're stuck at home, we wanna take advantage of this opportunity. We invest time and money and energy to take advantage of a not so ideal situation. But if you're anything like me, my focus isn't always in the right place. And I think of all of these ways I can take advantage of being home to get stuff done around the house and all the movies and shows I can watch. I even had this vision of watching the whole Marvel Universe series of movies but my mind doesn't always go to the most important things I can spend my time or most important ways I can spend my time or the ways I can take advantage of this time spiritually. Most of us wanna take advantage of this time, but what would it look like to take advantage of our home alone time spiritually? The great news is I think Jesus shows us what that would look like. I wanna show you real quick four passages and four times that Jesus took advantage of alone time. And I want to start in Matthew chapter 4. Jesus is about to face the biggest moment, I think, up to this point in his life. It's the beginning of his ministry, and Satan is going to tempt him very intentionally in ways that would completely thwart his mission. I mean, think about it. If Jesus gives in to the temptations of Satan in Matthew chapter 4, if he takes the shortcuts that Satan offers him, it's all over. And I think Jesus knows this moment is coming. So what's he do? Look in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. That's why I think Jesus knows what's about to happen. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Jesus uses his alone time to store up the spiritual energy he would need to fight this battle. In scripture, fasting is always accompanied by prayer. And so it's obvious that Jesus spends 40 days of alone time in the wilderness to store up the spiritual energy he would need to fight this battle. Skip over to Luke chapter six. In Luke chapter six, Jesus is about to make one of the biggest decisions of his life. He's gonna choose from his larger group of disciples, the 12 guys who would lead his movement of redemption and salvation after he's gone. The stakes are huge. So what does he do first? 
Well, I'd be tempted to veg out on Netflix for a little while to get my mind off the decision. That's not what Jesus does. Look in verses 12 and 13. This is Luke chapter 6. In these days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose from them twelve whom he named disciples or apostles. Isn't that incredible? What does Jesus do before a big decision or before this massive moment? He finds alone time so he can store up spiritual energy. If you go back a page in your Bible to Luke chapter 5, Jesus is getting really, really famous because of his miracles. In fact, in verse 15 it says, But now even more the report about him went abroad, and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. So what do you do when everybody wants you and needs you? You keep going nonstop, right? No, not Jesus. Look at verse 16. He's got all these crowds coming to him, but he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. Jesus didn't just take advantage of alone time. He intentionally socially distanced himself from other people so that he could charge up spiritually with the purpose of coming back and serving more people. Let me show you one more. Go back to Mark chapter 6. In Mark 6, the apostles have been out on these little mission trips, I guess you could call them. And they come back to Jesus and they tell him all that they've done. And their ministry is super busy. Jesus is doing amazing things through the apostles and through his own ministry and miracles. And in fact, in Mark 6 verse 31, it says, Many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. Now, we usually brag about that, don't we? Hey, how you doing, man? Man, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I haven't even had time to eat. And we wear it as a badge of honor. We're proud of ourselves because we've been so busy that we don't even have time to eat. Not Jesus. When it got to that point, when things were so busy that they didn't even have time to eat, you know what they did? It was time for social distancing. Look at verses 31 and 32 of Mark chapter 6. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. When they were overwhelmed, Jesus intentionally took his disciples to find alone time. Here's what I want you to see. Over and over again, Jesus didn't just take advantage of alone time. He created alone time so that he could charge up spiritually. And here's what we learned from Jesus. As we wrestle with how to take advantage of this home alone and isolation time we have, here's what I want you to know. Being alone is an ideal time to recharge spiritually. It's funny, you know the one thing that nearly everyone does when they're home? Especially if you've been at work all day, or you've been at school all day, you know what everybody does? They plug in their phones, everybody does. You know the last thing I do before I get into my bed every single night without fail? I plug my phone in. Home alone, home alone time is always plug-in time. It's always time to recharge my phone so it'll be ready when it's time for me to leave the house. A couple of years ago, we bought this couch that has USB ports in the, the center console. And so at night, if we sit down to watch a movie or a show, sometimes my phone will be on the verge of dying. Sometimes it will die. I always have access to plugging it in, even when I'm laying there on the couch. The only way my phone battery runs out is if I'm too lazy to plug it in or too lazy to go get the cord and plug it in right next to me because I'm sprawled out in the recliner on the couch. Listen, the same is true spiritually. When we're alone, the only way our spiritual batteries will run out is if we're too lazy to plug them in. Because when we're home alone, we always have access to plug in and recharge spiritually. So this is what I want you to hear. Being alone is an ideal time to recharge spiritually. So view your alone time as plug-in time. Just like being home is a time to plug in our devices, view this time at home as an incredible opportunity to plug in spiritually. So I wanna challenge you to do three things. Number one, I wanna challenge you to change your attitude. Listen, I know this stinks, and there's a lot of things that 
you guys are missing out on, that we're all missing out on. There's so much about this that is that stinks, right? But we've got to change our attitudes and see this as an opportunity, not just a massive disadvantage. This is a chance to take your relationship with God to the next level. But we're only going to do that if we see this as an opportunity and not just a disadvantage. Second, I want to challenge you to find some time for silence and solitude. That's a really fancy way of saying, find some time to be alone and be quiet. Now, here's the thing. This is the perfect opportunity for that. And we've got the time to do it. So I want to challenge you to take 15 or 20 minutes. If you're really brave, 30 minutes. I mean, let's face it. We know we've got the time for this. And I want to challenge you to go completely silent. No talking, so get away from other people. Leave your phone behind, no texting, no social media. And spend that time in silence and spend that time alone in the Word. So I want you to bring a Bible with you, a paper copy of the Bible, not your phone copy of the Bible. And spend some time in the Word. But don't just read three or four chapters in that 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Maybe read a chapter, but then zoom in on two or three verses and read them over and over again. Read them slowly. Maybe write them out. Meditate on those verses. And so I want you to, to have a copy of the Word of God with you. Zoom in on it. Focus on it. Um, and I also want you to have a, a journal with you. Something to write on so that you can write down what you've learned and maybe what God has taught you from that passage or that specific moment or those specific verses that you've kind of zoomed in on. And then I want you to take what you've write, written down Take the, the lessons you've learned and pray about them. So challenge number two, find some time for silence and solitude. And then the third one is an easy one. It's kind of a bonus fun one. Go outside when you do this. Find a quiet, lonely place to spend your silence and solitude outside. Maybe you take a fishing pole with you. Maybe you take your Eno with you. But take your Bible too and it's something to write with and spend this quiet time outside. So those are your three challenges. Change your attitude. I need to do this too. It's easy to be negative in all of this mess. But change your attitude. Find some time for silence and solitude, maybe 15, 20, even 30 minutes a day with your Bible, a journal, and spend some time meditating on the Word of God and do it outside. A few minutes ago, I said this. Home alone time is always plug-in time. It's always time to recharge my phone so, so it'll be ready to go when I leave the house. Imagine if all of us used this time to recharge spiritually so that we're ready to go when we leave the house. And by ready to go, I mean we are ready to serve and we're ready to share our faith and we are ready to live on mission like never before. Imagine what God could do with us when we leave the house, when it's finally time to leave the house. Imagine what God could do with us if we used our time in the house to recharge spiritually. Imagine how he would use us for his glory if we viewed our alone time as recharge time.